Good evening, everybody. This is Bonnie Hunter in the basement at Quiltville, where I have not spent <laughs> a lot of time as of late. Um, welcome to Tuesday after Memorial Day weekend. How many of you feel like your week is short sheeted by a day when three day weekends happen? I know mine does. Um, it feels like a Monday, yet it's Tuesday. That means the middle of the week is already tomorrow. Hello, folks joining. So glad that you're joining us tonight. Um, what's going on here in the basement? I have been packing and getting ready to take a trip to Mississippi. So I'm doing a quilt show this weekend. I'm looking forward to um, it's the Mississippi State Guild. I am looking forward to three days worth of workshops. 50 students per day. So we have a, a workshop on Thursday, one on Friday, a lecture Friday night. So if you're in the area, please see about coming by. I think that's open to the public. There may be a small cover charge, but we'd love to see you. Um, and then a class on Saturday and lickety split, I'm back home on Sunday. So there will be more um, retreat center workings um, going on next week as I have the week off. How many of you heard of our new project? I'm so excited. I have not talked to you uh, about Quiltville Inn since um, the purchase of this property happened after our last quilt cam, and it's been a good five weeks solid of busy, busy, go, 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 with no time to do a, a quilt cam in between. Um, I closed on the property just before heading to, to Georgia. In fact, I headed to Georgia the next day after closing. And then I had one day in between Georgia and flying out to Washington State. So there was no time to fill in a, a quilt cam there. And once I got back from Washington State, I had just a few days before going up to New Hampshire. And of course, I wanted to spend all of the time that I could up in Virginia. So here's what's going on. We purchased a property with a very large Victorian house. Um, it's about 4,200 square feet, which does not include outbuildings or the basement. Five large bedrooms, currently two and a half baths. We're looking at um, converting that downstairs half bath into a bath with a corner half round or quarter round, I guess it would be quarter round shower um, so that we can have more showers going. It's already got on-demand hot water. So we're really excited about that. A little bit of backstory. The house was built, started the first part of the house, I should say, the back part, was built in 1884. They told us it was around um, 1890, give or take a couple of years, but the records um, prove that it was 1884. And it was built for the guy that was the, um, I guess you would call the manager of the mill. There's a woolen mill just behind the property that was operational at the time. And the, the in, the, in, the, <laughs> I'm tripping over my words in excitement. I just can't, can't handle it. Um, so the, the guy, the foreman or whatever he was lived there for quite some time. And then as the property came into the hands of one of the, the um, field's children, he and his wife, um, and they had one son, um, added on to the house around uh, somewhere between 1900 and 1906. And we've got pictures of the house before it was renovated and then afterwards. So there was all this fancy gingerbread and lovely turned, um, what do you call those things that are on the front porch? Front, not the railing, but the, the other things. What are those things? <laughs> um, they were they were all fancy and then they did this redo right around the turn of the century 1906 right when the craftsman stuff started coming in and all of that gingerbread all of that fancy fussiness of the Victorian era um, was taken by things that were a little bit more solid a little bit more chunky a little bit more stately so the front facade of the house changed significantly but the curve of that porch is still there and we've got um, plans to open this into a retreat center starting 2020 is, is what we're shooting for. I know that seems like a long time in the distance, but it's really not because there's a lot of work to be done. Um, my calendar is full for teaching and lecturing and traveling through next year, through 2019. So I don't even see any open spots to start hosting retreats until we hit 2020. Now there's a few things that I'm gonna continue doing. I will continue to do um, appearances occasionally 
I have to do this because, you know, book publisher wants you to do this and it's understandable. Um, so I will continue to do some events. I plan to continue international travel with craft tours because that's something I dearly love. If you really want to expand your view of the world, travel. It's the one thing that, that will change you. Um, so we want to keep that. Am I planning on teaching every weekend that retreats are open at the inn? Probably not. I, I know that there's a lot of people that would be happy to just come use the space. We have room for 16. And um, in fact, we purchased um, workspace tables just yesterday. Those will be um, shipped and arrive uh, by the end of June so that we can set that up. Um, so it, we're going to be booking groups. And the way that this is going to go, at least at first, because there is such an overwhelming response of everybody wanting to come that I don't know how to fit everybody all at the same time when, when we first open. So what I'm asking people to do is gather or join with a group and we're booking groups of 16. And I will likely open up a um, the same kind of thing that we do for a giveaway using um, the InLinks app. And you will leave your, your name and your email address and that would be for group leaders only. Okay, so not absolutely everybody, but group leaders. And we're going to do a lottery system and I will pull a name and give that group their choice of which weekend they want to book. And then once they've chosen that, I'll choose another group and they can choose which weekend they want to book and we'll choose another group. And so it's going to be really exciting just as we get up and running on how this is going to go. I'm laughing because we just watched um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory this this weekend. Our son Jeff picked up the DVD and brought it. It was his favorite as a kid, and it's still his favorite at 28. And the whole excitement over the golden ticket and who's going to get the golden ticket. So we're looking for something like that. Um, what about singles? What do we do if people are singles? Well, my plan is that I, I may start a Facebook page or a Yahoo group or, or whatever it is, a Google group, something with those who are willing to be an alternate for groups that maybe only have 12 and they're looking for four more to fill in. Some groups won't want people outside of their group. We just know that people are like this and people are people. And my thought is, uh, what better way to make new friends than to have somebody you don't know sitting across the table from you at retreat? And we're only strangers once, so we get to know each other. So that those who are wanting to travel in and are singles, we've got a way to make it so that you can come um, also. So this is what's going on. We've got bathrooms to redo. We've got kitchen to repaint. We've got design walls to do. We've got sewing spaces to set up. We've got electricians coming in to add lighting to the sewing room and, and outlets in the floor so that we can, can not have to drag cords all over the place. And there's just a lot of work. And in some ways, um, a year and a half doesn't seem like enough. But I hope that you'll enjoy um, watching along with us and seeing the things that I share and how we're setting things up at the end. The first bedroom of five already has its three beds in it. Well, I should say three bed frames. And we're looking for mismatched bed frames that will fill um, all five bedrooms. The largest, largest master bedroom will have four twins. All of the other rooms will have three. And uh, it's going to be fun to watch this fill up. So what am I doing today? I am thought this would be a let's talk about the kits kind of an evening because I've still got so much to do to get ready for this this trip tomorrow and I thought with all the questions I've had on kitting up projects show us how you kit up projects what goes into your kits what do you do what goes in your busy bag what goes in your sew at a hotel bag then I thought we could just um, take time for this if this is your first time joining me on quilt cam I want to welcome you um, quilt cam as you know as you've already found out is something that happens kind of on the fly when I'm home you never know when it's going to be it's never going to be scheduled but if you miss it for any reason you can always Catch it the next morning on my blog where it will be archived um, under the Quilt Cams tab at the top of my blog and posted in that morning's post along with any of the backfill of information um, that we talked about during this Quilt Cam. And maybe some of the folks that shared quilts um, through photos, through email, will be posted also with that. So you'll get more information if you follow along on the blog. If you miss the blog post and you don't know where else to go, you can always find the unedited, unexplained, unbackground, filled-in version in my YouTube channel on, on YouTube. So, diamond tile blocks. Have you been making some? This was the last thing that we worked on um, when we were here just 
about a month ago or a little bit over a month ago. And I have been asked, what's in your kits? Is this the one? Nope, this is the one that was missing parts. We don't want that one. <laughs> yeah, I lost a square somewhere, probably in a hotel somewhere. So this is how I have kit up projects. Now I have boxes of baggies and I tend to store the baggies flat in one of those 12 by 12 project boxes. If you store them flat, they take up less space and then they get um, less um, raggedy looking, more like you want to use them. But in each bag, I have placed two kits. Now this bag has only one kit left in it because I have um, already sewn the other kit that went in this bag. I know right where this one is. It's on the design wall at the, at the cabin. But I've got a center square. I've got my sashing pieces. I've got my cornerstones. And I've got my triangles. And if I put all of my pieces on one half of the square, I can fold the square up just like a taco. And it holds all the pieces for one set, nice and neat without having to use pins or wonder clips or whatever. The less stuff that I take in my suitcase, the better. The less stuff in a hotel room, the less stuff in a busy bag. So that's how these are. And I will usually put two to four kits in any bag. So I don't have to have each kit in its own separate bag if they're gathered up like this. And that also saves on the number of bags that I need to take. I'm a little sip of water here. I'd love to know what you have in your, I've got a wild hair stuck to my lip gloss. Isn't that nice? I'd, but I'd love to know what you keep in your busy bag for travel. Do you sew on the go? Do you work on hexagons or applique or whatever it is, embroidery? I'd love to see a picture of what you put in your busy bag. So it doesn't have to be tonight, but just think of it over the next few days when you have your bag out. Snap a, a picture. I was following along on uh, Instagram this morning, and my friend Linda Collins, who's Quilts in the Barn down in Australia, shared a picture of her little tin box that travels with her and all of her basted hexes are standing on end all lined up in little rows in this box it was the prettiest thing that i have ever seen and she said in her comments that you know somebody commented that wow that's so neat and she says it's the only way i can work so there's got to be a way that works for the way that you can work i'll show you another one of these kits in here because i've, I've had some real fun um, digging through these fabrics. Some of these are oldy moldy. Boy, some of these really do go back. Okay, so here's my one kit here. I get these two pieces apart. Okay. So here's my triangles. And this, this little shirting print, I don't know if you can see. Anybody you know plays bridge? I love the shirting prints because they're just very conversational, very unique. And I don't feel like I have to match the colors in the shirting print to the colors that are going in the block. Sometimes with these blocks, I've started with, so this is kind of an old, big floral. Where else can you use a big floral? Some of these I swear I never bought, right? They're just, I, I tackled some of my squares boxes to, to use up these pieces. And I will often go through this print that's right here and look for other fabrics that will complement. So these little purple squares, are going to be cornerstones on here. Then what else can we add to this to make it maybe a little bit updated? And I have this really fun gray tone on tone that's going to work with the purple and the navy blue floral square. I love the different textures. So you have the big print in the in the center. You have almost a solid in these cornerstones. These little sashings have just a little bit more texture to them. So it's almost a geometric there. And then we throw in this 1800s looking shirting fabric. So I love that, I love that. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. I have had problems in the past <laughs> with using up those larger florals because I do a lot of small piecing. And let's face it, you can't cut a large floral into a two and a half inch square and have any part of it really recognizable. So for these larger center squares, the florals are working really great. And I can pull a lavender for the sashings. 
and a yellow tone on tone to really pop out the yellow in that print. Which side is the right side? I think that's the right side. Yellow tone on tone. But check out this neutral for the background. It's almost modern, almost geometric. It's got grays and tans and uh, all on a cream background. None of these colors really, or none of these really look like they should go with this floral. I'll pop this back up here again so you can see. But it just adds a whole new dynamic. So if one of my fabrics is a floral, I probably will not use another floral in that block at all. If one of my um, fabrics is a plaid, it's likely to be, unless I'm doing a, re um, a repurposed shirt quilt, there will likely be no other plaid in there. I love all of the fabrics to show on their own and not blend into whoever its neighbor is. So this is what travels in my go to town bag when I sew in hotels. Now, we do have a new email address. We've used it a couple of times. It is quiltcamtime, Q-U-I-L-T-C-A-M-T-I-M-E at gmail.com. And emails are coming in because I can feel all kinds of good vibrations through my watch. So I'm popping in here to see who's visiting today. This is Mary C. And she's making ABCs. There's a lot of R's in my family, she says. Making a Scrabble-type quilt with my grandchildren's names, a work in progress, one more granddaughter coming in September. Congratulations. Quiltville Inn will stay on my bucket list for now. Fun to see all that you are doing with it. So here's her R's. Let's see if it's an embedded photo. So let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger. And there's her lowercase R's. How fun is that? I love things with alphabets. So any, any quilt that says anything is a, is a real favorite. That's just wonderful. Okay. So that's from Mary. This one's from Irene. Irene, who says, Quilt Cam, hello, girlfriend. She says, we're watching Quilt Cam at the Cozy Quilter. We've got you projected onto the wall and are happily stitching away. Hi, Cozy Quilter peeps. Um, the Cozy Quilter is one of my absolute favorite shops in Louisville, Kentucky. So if you're anywhere near Kentucky, be sure and stop by and tell Irene that Bonnie said hi. She says, Barb is working on a block of the month for the shop called Liberty for All. Sherry's working on On Ringo Lake. Mary is working on Fiddlesticks and Fancies. And I'm working on Pepper Dish by Quiltworks. Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. She says, uh, looking forward to seeing you here in August. All three classes are full. Bam, that's awesome. And I'm bringing my van empty so that we can fill it with good stuff. She says, our trip to England, although I'm getting a little jittery about the flight. No, you're not going to get jittery. You're just going to take an Ambien and go to sleep. You'll be just, just, just fine. So our trip to England in um, August is, is, my second time doing this itinerary, which has me even more excited because now I know what to expect. It was a few years ago that we took um, 40 quilters, and I believe we've got the same amount this time. And we wind up at the Birmingham Quilt Festival dur during the running of the festival, and I get to do a couple of book signings while I'm there. So I'm very excited and looking forward to that. And having these quilty peeps with me is going to be just great. So this one is from Julie Hollihan, who says, my travel project. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. She says, when I'm away from my machine, I like counted cross stitch, starting on a spring mini needle roll at the moment. And here's the contents of her project bag. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, this looks cool. Okay, so she's got that little needle nester thingy with the, with the magnet in it so that, that her needles don't go anyway. So you can see the... Her scissors, her floss, her needle minder, her project, and, and to-go bags, busy bags, don't have to take up a whole purse. It can just fit into a small little container, whatever it is, for when you're on the go, whether you're waiting at the doctor's office, as I did uh, this afternoon. I had two barnacles removed from my back. Um, I, I can't pronounce exactly what they were, but they were froze off this afternoon. So having my needlework there kept my hands busy. So while I was in the waiting room, I wasn't thinking about, you know, what, what would go on there. Um, this looks beautiful. So she's just got all of these contents in a little zipper pouch that she can take with her. Beautiful. Of course, the, the length of your trip and the time away is going to make a difference in how much you bring and how you decide to pack it. Um, oh, here's some pictures Irene sent. Oh, how fun is that? Oh, no, there's the, the big screen. Oh, that's hysterical. Okay, so, so there we are. The big screen is behind the girls. It looks like it's covering up much of Sherry's face. Love it. Just love it. 
Okay, so this one is from Debbie Hargrave who says, under my needle is a log cabin. Debbie Hargrave from Garland, Texas, working on my first log cabin. Well, these are gorgeous and I'm sure they won't be the first or the, or the last of many, I guess I should say. Log cabin quilts are just a favorite. Love them, that's wonderful. Okay, so let's move on to the busy bag. Just a minute. I can't believe it's been as long as it has been since we've been able to do this. I, so, um, okay, also in my, my go to hotel bag, this is my go to hotel bag. And it's one of those zipper pouches for clothing articles in a suitcase. So this one says CG on it because the maker of my um, suitcase is Club Glove. And when I bought the suitcase, these little organizers came inside. What I like about them, they're mesh, so I can see what's in here. Now, the one thing that's not in here that I, I think I left at the cabin was my battery-charged USB task light by daylight. It's just a small little light, and it's up at the cabin, so I'll have to borrow one. But what have I got in here? Um, a selection of rulers and my, my por portable seam guide sticky. Can you see it stuck there to the essential triangle tool? These are a must for me because I borrow machines from other people, and I need to know that the seam allowance I'm sewing on that borrowed machine is going to give me the same seam allowance on the machine I'm sewing at home. There should be no difference. It's not the machine that matters. It's where you set that needle. Oh, I bet this was one of the missing squares from one of these blocks. What do you think? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Also, for hotel sewing, you can't always travel with a big power strip. This does the job for me because in a, in a hotel, the the outlets are limited and they're usually full with lamps being plugged in or this being plugged in or the other thing so i can unplug the lamp from the wall stick this in plug the lamp back in here and then have one for my laptop and one for my sewing machine or i can have one for my little travel iron and and one for my sewing machine here so this is just a very very simple little three socket thing and i i don't leave home without it because you just never know if there's going to be a place for you to charge your phone or, or whatever it is so that goes in there and this is the cord for charging my lamp that is no longer <laughs> in my bag so we'll keep that in here just so that we don't lose that now this is very simple and it's kind of beat up looking and i think i picked this up at a, at a hancock's fabrics not hancock's of paducah but at the regular hancock's fabric off of a sale table and it's been the perfect size little thing for my tools so in this little this little tray, I've got, yes, I know this looks like a, a baster, but this is what I get lint and stuff out with. I've got um, screwdrivers of various sizes, and I never leave home without a standard needle threader. You never know where you're going to need that, but probably my most valuable item in this box is a standard featherweight foot because I will borrow a featherweight from somebody while I am on the road. And invariably, it has some aftermarket full fat bodied quarter inch foot on it that gives me too wide of a seam. And often it will also have an edge guide on it. No edge guide. So um, I, I bring my own foot so that I can sew happy. And then I just remember to get my own foot off of their machine and put their funky aftermarket foot back on when I'm done. Okay, and also in here, Tooltron oil. You don't have to take a huge oil bottle with you when you when you travel. This is just enough if somebody's machine is a little bit squeaky, needs a drink, that I can I can touch that up. I believe in um, leaving things better than how I found them. So oftentimes machines are having better tension and running smoother than when they were dropped off to me. You never know when a little piece of lint or thread is going to get in that bobbin area underneath and you there's there's no other way to get it out unless you have a good pair of tweezers. These are like serger tweezers. I love them because I can get those little needle nose things deep in there and pull that out. I also keep um, a variety of needles on on hand. This is a package of 12, and this was a package of 14 for doing um, paper piecing. If I'm paper piecing, the featherweight does not like the size. 12 it starts skipping stitches but a 14 will make bigger holes in the paper and the thread will be able to the timing's right for for that extra layer of paper being there what else is in here 
I'm not even sure this came with it. And I think this is just a cloth for wiping things down. So who knows? I might need that at some point. But this is very, very simple. Other things that you could add in here, maybe a couple of bobbins, um, maybe some hand sewing needles or um, a little magnet if you wanted to save needles or pins in here. But I love this because it just all fits up tight with this little rolly clip. And it doesn't take up much space in my suitcase, and it has uh, a whole lot of stuff in there. Okay, so also in here, small little cutting mat. doesn't take up much space, and it kind of adds some stability to the bag. Most of the time, my projects are already cut out and ready to go. They're kitted up. Now, there might be, just like with the diamond tile blocks, some trimming to be done. So this works really well for me. Also, ha, ha, ha. Featherweight bobbin, that needed to go in here. Little did you know this was strategic so that I could be ready for my trip tomorrow. Okay, so this was made for me by my friend Sandy. It's just a little tiny little travel mat um, with, the, with the ironing silver stuff on it. It also fits flat in this bag. And oftentimes I will just take the hotel iron and place it beside me on the desktop. And this is all I need to press units. I'm not pressing yardage. I'm not pressing big things. I have all of my pieces cut. I, excuse me. I just need to press units when they're done. So I will keep that with me. And uh, usually just what rulers that I'm using. So my essential triangle tool lives in here. I love a two and a half by six and a half inch ruler for, for many tasks. This is the Quiltville one available on my website. Shameless plug but also a small square. If I'm squaring up things, whether it's uh, string blocks or whatever it is, I love a good little square ruler to make sure things are square. What do I often find myself um, using rulers for? First off, seam test. This was the seam test I did just before we started quilt camp. I took two two-inch squares. I used the bonus buddy or the little yellow seam guide. Either are interchangeable to set my needle. Now, I will confess that it took me three tries to get this to come out the size that it needs to be at three and a half inches. One time, it was a little bit too long. The next time, it was just like three hairs too shy. So I adjust that seam guide to give me unit size. This is what matters. This is not what matters. This is only ever gonna be approximate until you determine that it gives you this size. So. That's what goes in here. And I will go to the email and see what you're saying at me. We may not even get sewing done tonight <laughs> at this rate. Oh. Okay. Let's go in. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to see what we missed. Wow, there's all kinds of things coming in here. Goodness gracious. So K Kathy Borger or Borger says. Happy Scrappy Carolina chain. And she says, here's my version of a very happy Scrappy Carolina chain. The pattern and colors are so interesting. We just have to keep looking at it. My family loves it, and it adds so much to our home. I'm excited because this is what I'm teaching in Mississippi this weekend. Yay. Thanks so much for all you do and for sharing your life with us. I never miss a post. I'm already in love with Quiltville Inn. Hope to visit someday. So happy for you. And here is her picture. Oh, that is wonderful on that shelf. So here's her Carolina chain. The block was originally in my Addicted to Scraps column with Quiltmaker Magazine. Try to get it up closer there. And now it's in my book, Addicted to Scraps, for the full-size quilt. The whole thing comes from two-inch strips and two-inch squares. So you can annihilate a whole bunch of scraps in the process. And it's just light on dark, dark on light. The design happens automatically. This is just a fabulous finish. I'm going to biggie size this just a little bit so you can check out her colors and her fabrics. Isn't that just beautiful? You can also set it on point. Mine in the book is on point, and you get a totally different look. Isn't that fun? That's just terrific. Thank you for sharing that. All righty. So we've got here Shannon Seymour says, Thanks for Quill Cam. She's in Prairieville, Louisiana, and she says, Tonight I'm putting the final few stitches in the bindings of my parents' 57th wedding anniversary gifts. 
plaids for dad and pinks and blues for mom. Thanks so much for the free patterns. And so here's, um, you can see both of her quilts right here. Her dad's getting a Scrappy Mountain Majesties on the top. And the bottom is the traditional trip around the world. Uh, both of those patterns are free under the free patterns tab at the top of the blog. Those are fabulous finishes. They're going to look what they're going to be wonderful. They're going to be much loved. And congratulations to your parents on such a, a long, happy marriage. That just makes me smile. Jody Moriarty says, thanks for quilt cam. I need it, she says, because I'm currently quilting a quilt with my walking foot. It's going to be a last second finish as this is a graduation gift for a nephew. It is made from men's shirts. I sense a theme. It is made from men's shirts, and a few of them are my dad's and his grandfather, or my dad's, his grandfather's. I had to do a Jacob's Ladder because his, this nephew's name is Jacob. I'm having so much fun watching along with the Quiltville in progress. So exciting. I'm thrilled for you. And Jody's in Indianapolis. Oh, Jody, that is gorgeous. How wonderful. So here's your traditional Jacob's Ladder using recycled shirts. This has family history to it, so it's very appropriate to do something like this for a nephew. And it's definitely not a girly quilt, but one that he can love. So I, I think that's just totally appropriate. And if I biggie size this just a little bit, I'm not sure how clear this will be on camera, but can you see what those plaids are? Aren't they awesome? Every time I see a vintage quilt that uses a lot of plaids, I instantly, feel like digging right into my recycled shirt stash and doing some more. Who knows? Maybe we need to do a scraps and shirt tails three because the ideas are out there. Just want to do it. There's just not enough sewing time in my life right now. That's beautiful, Jody. Okay, so we have Geraldine Noble says triangles. What size do you cut the triangles using the easy angle ruler? Here are some of my blocks with strip pieced centers. Okay, so I use the the two inch line for quarter square triangles so it's this two inch strip size for quarter square triangles not half square triangles and it looks like you've got yours at quarter square um the nice thing is so here's one that she's done um, with her string block in the center so if you're cutting from regular squares and you're cutting those squares with an x as in the traditional rotary cutting directions you're going to get stripes that go every which way if you cut from strips using the green lines on the essential triangle tool, all of your stripes will be going the same way, which really is a neat effect on the quilt. Let's see, I don't think I have one that, other than that one that I just showed you where, so when I cut, I cut these triangles from strips and see if I put this one this way, can you see how that works? So the way that the ruler flip flops, flip flops, flip flops, cutting you know triangles this way triangles this way triangles this way all the stripes go the same way but if you're cutting a square with an x you're going to have some stripes go this way and other stripes going this way so it just depends on the effect that you want but try the essential triangle tool and two inch strips they'll be a little bit bigger there's a little bit more to trim down but that's not necessarily a bad thing either okay i love the string piece centers love them love them all right, one more, and then we're going to get on to the busy bag. So this one is from, let's see, Jeanette, who says, this is Jeanette Gilbs, who says, I currently carry a sandwich box purchased at Wally World. It holds everything I need for my hexes. However, I am teaching, reaching the point where I will begin joining the flowers into a top. So can I bug you about showing us your travel bag? That's what we're just about to do. That's what we're about to do. Can you make us one of those videos, what's in my bag? I'm going to need 13 more quilting friends to stay at Quiltville Inn. October up there sounds dreamy. And she's from St. John's, Florida. So be thinking about this. She's right between Jacksonville and St. Augustine. Um, I'm open to ideas. I will probably rue the day that I said that. <laughs> but I want to find a way that would be easy. So so let's say that that group of quilters from Tennessee has 12 or 13, and they're looking for three more to bring their number up to 16. Now, they can rent the house with just 13, but that makes the price up per person, so they would rather spend that money on fabric, so they're welcome, welcoming in 
three stranger quilters. Where's the best place for them to hook up with these stranger quilters? Do I do a Facebook group or do I do like um, an email news group thing where somebody can post a thing and say, um, group of 13 in Tennessee needs three more, you know? And of course it would have to be moderated so that no, no weirdos join in. But how do we find the best way to do that? So, of course, it's easiest if they find people that they know in their own area. But I want to have a way that makes it possible for singles to join in, too, without having to deal with 16 singles and the deposits going back and forth and the confirmations going back and forth and all, and all of this stuff when I'm still on the road. So that's, that's what we're thinking about. So it may take us until 2020 to um, figure this out, but we'll figure this out. So this is my busy bag. Ask and you shall, shall receive. This is what you wanted to see. So I had some really salty fries with dinner and I am, my whistle is not wet. So the, my hexagon project is done and this busy bag, which was full, is now um, not very full anymore, but I still travel with it. Why? Because it sits on my lap just like this. So just this way, and it becomes a lap desk for me. So I don't have to deal with that TV tray that comes down or, or out of this arm of the seat on the plane or whatever. What I have found and what somebody commented, um, I think Karen, Karen Brulé, if you're out there, you know, I think it was her comment who said, I tried sewing on the plane and my stuff was going everywhere and falling on the floor and I don't know how you do it. Um, a friend of mine posted the video of the gal that was um, quilting in space. Have, did you remember seeing that when she was in space piecing her quilt blocks and how she was using Velcro to hold things from floating up in the air or, or whatever she was? Same kind of thing. My number one rule for flying in a plane is always keep your zippers closed. Because if you are sewing along and this is wide open and something starts to shift, well, you're going to end up with, with your needle threader on the floor, your scissors on the floor, or whatever it is. And, you know, once it's on the floor, you can't bend over and pick it up because the next seat is right in front of you. So keep your stuff zipped up at all times. Does it take more time to keep zipping these things? Yes, but nothing gets lost. So um, the, the ins and outs of this bag, this bag is now, what, four years old maybe? If not, if not more. It came in a set at Sam's Club. It's a cosmetics bag, and it had two other cosmetics bags with it, a, a small little round one with a zipper for your makeup and another little tall one for lotions and potions and, and, and other things. And those two other bags go in my suitcase suitcase, and this just holds my handwork. Um, in the front is a zipper pocket, and I love that this is clear. So look for things that are clear. Um, this is for charging my phone on the go. And my new phone um, has that USB-C thing. So I need to be sure that I have the USB-C cord with me because a regular USB isn't going to do it. And sometimes you can plug into the little seat thing underneath. Sometimes if it's a long flight and I have a movie in front of me, there's a USB right there to charge your phone, but you never know. So you got to have a um, brick in your, your busy bag and, and a charger cord. Sometimes I rent a car. This holds my phone to the, um, the vent in the car that I, that I rent. And I just keep it here because then I always know that it's, that it's here. I know where it is. When I'm going to the car rental place and I'm standing in line, I can get this out. Okay, and then there's a pen in there. Pretty basic, just normal pen. Okay, so these are... There's one big mesh pocket right here, and then there's another clear plastic pocket. And I'm, I'm thinking that the mesh pocket is so that damp things can dry out. I finished two blocks this past week, this past trip. So I've got this one, and I've got this one. And for those who are curious why it looks soft, because I took out the papers from the six center hexagons. So once they are completely surrounded, once a shape is completely surrounded, you can take the paper out of the middle and that makes things a little bit more pliable so it's easier to get your needle where you wanna be rather than sewing with something that feels like it's a dinner plate. Okay, so I've got two of those done. I've got 
Oh, here's a partial. Here's a, a good way to show you how these are coming together. So these star stars are the exact same ones um, that are in my Rishi pattern that we did in China. So it's the same size hexagon, same technique. I'm just going to make it bigger. So if you want to know how to do these, the Rishi pattern and all other digital patterns are on sale through midnight tonight in the digital pattern section of the Quiltville store using coupon code digital, D-I-G-I-T-A-L-2-5. That's going to get 25% off digital purchases only, okay? So when I am doing these, I make three tumbling blocks. The third one is, is yet to be made for this one. And I find it easiest to sew obtuse angles. Obtuse ones are the gentle angles. The um, acute ones are the really tall sharpie angles. So I will piece things together to give me some obtuse angles. And that way that third tumbling blocks unit will set in here really easy. And then I have three more obtuse angles to set the diamonds in these last three places. So um, it, I find it very easy to match points doing it this way rather than sewing all six star diamonds together and having to sew in some really sharp um, diamond points there. Those are acute. Not that they're cute. Some may be cute, but they're acute, um, which, which is funny because when I go back to my massage therapy school training, we learned that acute um, meant that it was painful. <laughs> And it's it's a problem right now. It's not mild. It's acute. It's a disaster. So I avoid acute things. Um, and and so the easy angle. So anyways, I'm getting away from myself. But the little wonder clippy things, the, even the generic ones, they help me keep things clipped together at all times. So I will keep even my spare parts clipped to the block that I'm working on again because if something slides to the floor you're going to lose it. Now one of the other things that I like about this mesh pocket is that I can also pin to it. So if there's some parts that I was going to need later, I could pin them straight through the mesh and not worry about worry losing the mesh and I can have several blocks um here pinned so that I have what I need without having to dig for it. Now there's a center pocket, and the center pocket is for everything. Remember, I'm traveling. It's not just a sewing kit. This is my my everything because my backpack is usually in the overhead bin um, above. So must have gum. I buy gum in those big cups, and I refill this thing because it fits my my bag perfectly. Um, I've got two colors of thread. The one that is in the other bag over here. And there's a reason why this is this way too. But these are the two colors that I'm, I'm getting by um, with. This one is called, can't read it, antique white, because the, the, the words were on the whole. This is the antique white, and it blends through most everything. But if it looks too light on something else, this one is the light gray, and these are both Signature 60. They're manufactured still in Mount Holly, North Carolina, and I'm a Carolina girl, so I'm using this and loving it. Ask your local shop to get local products in. If we want to keep industry in the United States, we've got to um, purchase American-made product products. Okay, other things. Hand lotion. I don't know about you, but I wash my hands all the time because I'm traveling and I don't know who sat there and you use the restroom on the plane or you use the restroom in the in the airport and we're washing 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 and my skin hates it so i keep hand lotion because we're dealing with fabric and all of the oils from our hands go into the into the fabric and then it, we're left really really dry so i i use that other things in here there's some kleenex and some lip balm got to have lip balm because the planes are dry okay other side this is this is very very important you must squirrel away all of the omens that the airplane gives you, whether you want some or not, because you never know when you're going to be stuck on a layover somewhere and miss a plane. <laughs> You've got to. Okay, so we have almonds. We have a gluten, gluten-free almond bar thing here. We have gluten-free pretzel mix. And then one-fourth of a chocolate, dark chocolate bar. Okay, so I'm headed to... Um, Mississippi tomorrow. I think I think this will get me there. I do. I really do think it'll get me there. 
Uh, I keep two sets of headphones in my busy bag. This set is by Bose, and yes, I lost the cover in the seat back pocket in front of me, so we got it in a new cover. But these are noise canceling, so when I'm watching a movie, I can plug these right into the movie screen and um, listen and stitch that way. But if there's no movie screen, I don't use these because the cord gets in my way of stitching quite often. So I have a headset kind that is Bluetooth to my phone so that I can listen to audiobooks that way. Um, and that's what goes in here. So it's really pretty self-explanatory. There's not as much stuff in this busy bag as there was before. Whoops. Other things that I need. Little box of Thread Heaven because um, thread gets dry and snarly. And I really like Thread Heaven when I'm doing handwork. I also heard that the Thread Heaven company was going out of business, so we won't be able to find it anymore. I guess it's just not a um, item that people use anymore, so I've kind of stocked up on, on this stuff. This is the needle threader I use because I can't see to thread a needle worth beans. Um, I sew with a number 10 applique sharp. Clover is my favorite brand. I love the Clover applique sharps, number 10. And these threaders thread those needles. This is the inside cartridge for one of those Bowen um, needle threaders that has the case that you can put the needles in the bottom. It actually works better with no case around it, and it's a lot cheaper and smaller and takes up less space in my bag. So I've got a couple of those just in case I lose one. This is my, I would call this the emergency kit because I've been bumped up on a plane on occasion, and if they stick you in bulkhead, there's nothing you can do to get your other seat back. You're stuck bulkhead, which means your entire bag is up above where you can't reach it because you can't have your, your bag with you. But this I can kind of stick, you know, right down by my side. These are my, my block sets, background rectangles and the star rectangles. They're pinned together. I've got several sets in here and enough papers to keep me busy for a long time. These are by paper pieces. The link is in the Rishi pattern. Okay. This little silk bag holds my TJ Lane thimble. I've also got a little necklace clasp that I can wear it, but when it's not on my neck, I put it in something that's easy to be seen were I to drop it. I'm not going to lose my thimble. Whoops, like that. Another important thing that TSA has never taken from my busy bag. These are folding seam rippers, and they do two things. First of all, they'll remove basting stitches really easy because I do hand baste my English paper piecing. I feel like I get a tighter edge, and things don't come unglued and be floppy at the points if I can thread baste them down. So I prefer thread basting, but this little folding seam ripper has never been um, taken by TSA. Not in China, not in Bali, not in South America, not in Europe. They just don't know what it is. And it's only about seven bucks. So were they to steal it, I, I would not um, mind. The needle threader also has a little blade right here, right here on the edge. So I can cut thread with that also. But um, I keep a seam ripper as a... Thread slicer, stitch remover, thread picker, whatever. Keep that in there. And that's really all that there is to my busy bag. One of the other reasons I like it to have a clear front, we'll stick this in here. I will be ready tomorrow because you helped me get organized. Okay. I can put other things in here as well as needed, um, where it be medications or anything like that. But it all fits inside of my backpack, and then it's easily removed from my backpack when it's time to get on the plane. But with this clear pocket here, I usually put my boarding passes right there so I can easily see where I'm going. So that's busy bag hotel sewing, busy bag flight sewing, or sitting while you're getting your car fixed, or whatever it is, just never leave home without your busy bag. Okay, let's check um, who is checking in with us. This one says, just coffee. I've been practicing my quilting with rulers on my string quilt. It's been a learning curve, 
hoping to be one of your guests when things open up and get running. So exciting. Oh, that's beautiful. That is gorgeous. So she's done, looks like rectangle string blocks. And she's done them kind of in a barn raising layout right there. And she's practicing her ruler work while she's stitching those. I can never get enough of string blocks. I just can't, just can't get enough of string blocks. That's beautiful. Pamela Keller says, working on treadle runners. The holes will have cork in them. The light colored runners will be for my Wheeler and Wilson number nine treadle from 1908. And the darker pair is for my national two spool. Oh, you lucky dog. I've been looking for a national two spool. The runners keep the metal off the carpeting. The spools are temporary handles for flipping the wet runners and allowing them to dry. Okay, so I need to biggie size this to see what she's talking about here. So she's lifting up her treadle off of the floor so that the, the pedal will move. If you've got enough loft to your carpet, the treadle won't want to pedal. So you've got to lift it up just a little bit. Oh, I see what you're doing. Nice. Okay. So she's doing two colors of stain. These are wood. They're little platforms. Think of um, skis. And her treadle machine will fit right on there. And I bet that the wheels, I bet the wheels will sit um, right in where those little divots are, where the wooden spools are that are keeping things up off the ground. Where there is a wheel, there is a way to um, get those treadles to work. so thirsty i just can't get enough all righty okay so here's one who says taking your class on thursday yay so this is from anna and she says i'm so excited to meet and learn from you on thursday what do you think i probably need some more light fabric strips or can a light be something like a lime color let's see her picture's coming in i think you've got a lot of rainbow here but what I don't see, I'm going to show you guys here. So this is what Anna is asking. She's, she's got a lot of fabric cut here for her um, Carolina chain. But what I don't see are any whites, creams, beiges, or very pastel colors. All of hers are bright, 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 bright. Now, that doesn't mean that the pattern's not going to work. But um, it's going to be fairly on the dark side with a whole lot of color and if that's the look that you're going for i would say yes for me when i'm saying light fabrics to me that's more things with a neutral background so um white cream beige very pale yellow baby 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 pink things that are way less than medium way lighter than medium you've got to go to the light side of of the scale if you want these to have enough contrast to show um, what you're going to do so you may want to bring some and just if you have some questionable ones you don't even have to cut them just toss them in a bag because we can cut them in class and we can also swap strips with other students during class there's going to be 50 of us there and you're going to make good friends with the people that are at your workstation so swap some strips with each other and that's going to bring in a lot more variety this is one of the reasons why i don't teach from a kit because I don't feel like it teaches anybody anything as far as putting fabrics together. And we learn by seeing what each other are doing. And you might see your neighbor do something that's like, oh, wow, oh, I'm going to try that combo. I really like that. So um, bring what you've got. But I don't really see any light fabrics in here. Everything in your basket is darker than medium. So you need to go with some very, very pastels or some whites and creams and beiges as well so that these colors have a place to land okay so we'll see you in class on thursday hooray i'm excited about that jennifer where's my jennifer she says i seldom catch quilt cam live so yay i finished the top of my diamond tile quilt you suck <laughs> everybody is getting their diamond tile quilts done mine are in baggies missing parts but this is one of the reasons why we are switching over to being innkeepers because then I can come and sew with everybody and I won't be the, the last one on the totem pole. Uh, I love teaching. I love traveling. I love my students. And it's just been about the last year that I feel like, especially when a class is really popular, 
that I'm teaching the same thing again and again and again and again. It's like Groundhog Day, the movie, the quilter's version. And you try to put as much excitement in it for the 120th time. It's like, uh, okay, so the other thing that sucks, my brother and my dad are at James Taylor tonight in Phoenix. And uh, <laughs> so I get this text message. But I can just, um, James Taylor has always been my favorite go-to guy. So, yeah, you guys suck. But um, I can just imagine them being on stage for the 15,000th concert and somebody in the audience going, play me fire and rain, do fire and rain. And he's got to play it like it's the first time he's ever played it to an audience. So um, that's, that's, that's about where I'm at. And I love teaching. I just need to balance it and I need more time to create. And hopefully this will allow me some teaching. Yes, there will be classes at the end. So any group will have the opportunity of saying, yes, we want to come stay and we want the add-on of a Bonnie class. And we can, we can work on that for you. So some of the times will be um, if the group just wants to sew on their own thing and I can pop in and out and see how they're doing and spend time with them. Some of it will be, okay, your group wants this class and this is the class that we're going to do and we're going to do a two-day class. Um, so the, the, the way weekends are going to run, and this is just off the top of my head and it may change at any given moment, um, that weekends are prime time. And so three-day stays for the inn are Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If your group only wants a two-day, it's going to be Monday, Tuesday. If your group takes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and also wants Monday, Tuesday, we'll throw in Sunday for free because I don't have to pay the housekeeper to come in and clean. So that's what we're thinking. And if you, if you, uh, we may work it around. And I do plan on having some dates that are just open retreat. I will say here there's 16 spots, and and. Those will be just open sign up for whoever wants to um, sign up for those. And it's just going to take us some time to figure out what we're doing because heaven knows, I don't know what we're doing. I've attended many retreats. I've taught at many retreats. I've studied how things are done. I know what I like, how things work. And I do know things that I didn't thought, think worked at all. And we're going to learn as we go. So I'm just asking for some patience. On, on those things, but I would wish that I had a place to bring in 20,000 people because I think we'd have a ball. We could do like my son's uh, music festival thing and have it be all quilters. Okay, so Jennifer, whoops, I just lost your email, Jennifer. Did you send a picture of that quilt? I'll have to go back and find you. So here's Scott Flanagan who says, Quilt Cam, enjoying Quilt Cam as I work on trying to fold, organize, and put quilt collections into some semblance of order and have it look organized, can show what I am, can't show what as I am binding as they're for future quilt maker issues. Oh, Scott, that looks gorgeous. Okay, so how, how many of you have quilt stashes that look like this? That looks amazing. Where do you store your quilts? This looks terrific. So I'm, I'm looks like your, your um, room has Goodness sakes, I'm looking at, okay, the, the door frame, and you've got a transom window over your door. Yes, I'm that Snoopy. And I'm, I'm biggie sizing, so I can see the pictures that are on your shelves. It's good to see your smiling face. I see a puppy dog kissing your ear. Okay, we have all kinds of things. Oh, there's board games. I like the board games. This is, this is so wonderful because you get a real glimpse at the real person behind all the fabulous designs. And if you haven't followed Scott, he does quite a few quilts um, for Quilt Maker. And if you pick up any given Quilt Maker magazine, while you're looking for my Addicted to Scraps column, you'll probably come across one of his quilts, which means that you'll spend uh, more time looking at his quilts and forget about looking for my column. But this is awesome. I'm looking to see if I recognize any of these. These are just beautiful, Scott. I have um, a walk-in closet off of one of the upstairs bedrooms, and there's four or five stacks of quilts in this walk-in closet, and my thought was that I would keep them kind of organized by theme. So this stack would be the string quilts. This stack would be the scraps and shirt tails recycled fabric type quilts. These would be the mystery quilts, and these ones over here would be the free pattern tab quilts, and then over here would be the, the whatever. And it never fails that the one that I need is at the bottom of the farthest pile all the time. So um, looking for better storage ideas there. Great to hear from you tonight, my friend.
Okay. And we are just a couple more. Sarah Hoffman says, busy bag. I caught you on my drive home from work. I do counted cross stitching as busy bag. We travel by car constantly at work and I can get a lot done. I think I got this done in about four months. Finished it just this weekend. This allows me to quilt at home and stitch on the road, working on both of my favorite hobbies. Sooner or later, I will begin hand quilting. So could you possibly point out where you talk about your hand piecing method? A tutorial, maybe. Um, my hand piecing or my hand quilting? I've never really done anything on the hand quilting, but you know a really great gal to follow as far as hand quilting instructions go is Sarah Filkey from Australia. She's got some... Um, wonderful YouTube videos and the last name is I think it's F I E L K E yes I close my eyes when I spell in my head F I E K L E check that out for hand quilting as far as my hand piecing goes for like hexagons if you look under the tips and techniques tab at the top of my blog there's a tutorial for hexagons if you scroll down to H for hexagon tutorial you'll, you'll find that there and here's a picture of her beautiful cross stitch. Oh, that is gorgeous. We'll make this a little bit bigger so that folks can see it. it. I would swear that that jar is transparent. That's what thread does. You know, that changing your, the colors of your thread and, and um, playing with value and contrast that way, you've got depth and all kinds of different things going on, but this just looks 3D and it looks like you could reach right into that jar and pick those flowers. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I love it. Beautiful. I think there's a really big resurgence of cross stitch, and that's wonderful. So Judy Howard says, quilt. I made the pineapple blossom pattern for my niece for her 16th birthday. She likes purple, so I added the purple sashing, and the black is a solid purple. The back is a solid purple. And stitched with purple thread. It was such a fun quilt to make that she squealed when she saw it. Now that's a wonderful, wonderful response. I think there's no doubting how she felt about this. Quilt Villain is going to be beautiful. My name is Judy Howard and I live in Kentucky, but in my heart, I will always be a Carolina girl. That's wonderful. Okay, so I think I can turn this and make it bigger and squeeze it this way so that everybody can see. Okay. So there's her pineapple blossom in purples for her gifted, uh, what is that, her granddaughter, her niece, somebody. I'll have to double check again. And the pattern is from the free patterns tab at the top of the blog. If you've never made a pineapple blossom, you, you need to. They're, they're just way too fun. So again, she said it's going to her niece for her 16th birthday. That's wonderful. All right, folks. I know we've only been here for an hour. It's 9 p.m. on the Easty Coasty, and I have an early morning flight to Mississippi. And guess whose suitcase is not packed because clothing is still in the washer and needs to be put in the dryer. So I'm about to head off and do that. And guess what? We didn't do any stitching. We just talked. And you know what? Oh, shoot. I didn't even tell you what was inside this one. This is the other magic part of the, of the hotel stitching bag. So you see this? Unlock your dreams and explore your reality, not your realty, your reality, <laughs> okay? In this bag, rotary cutter, aha, removable poster tape. You know what this is for? Scene guide, stick down. This is um, a tube of Nova Montgomery's motor lube because I never know when a featherweight I get needs a drink. So motor lube. Signature 60 in gray. Okay. Closable scissors. I love that these lock, so as I'm traveling, they're not gonna poke open and, and cut through my bag. So trap, these are, this, this goes in my suitcase, my check bucket. What else is in here? Oh, miscellaneous Ziploc bags. Bonus buddy ruler. You might need this for drawing lines for bonus triangles or using the holes to set your seam allowance. This comes free in the Essential Triangle Tool Package, or you can buy it as a standalone in the Quiltville store. What else is in here? Okay, so this is a nifty Singer gadget that I keep for good luck. 
it's a needle threader that I've not figured out how to use yet. I need somebody who is experienced with this little vintage baby that came in the old Singer machines to show me how to use that. I love nice tools. So I've got a really pretty um, hand turned all with a nice sharp point and a seam ripper here because seam ripping does happen. I've got pens, pencils, triangle booty ruler because into everybody's uh, life some wonky triangles will fall no matter how perfect you're trying to be. So I always try to err on the scant side with my seam and then I can trim them up. Also in here, because you never know when a loner featherweight just needs a little bit of bling. There's a doily in here. I've got some needles, another pretty all a vintage singer screwdriver that could be I've got duplicates of stuff. This is this is more than uh, oh this is a this is a cool thing. So this one, if you undo the end, it's got all these different little screwdriver tips in here. So everything from flathead to Phillips in this little this was a, one of those little gifty things that came in the mail from some company. Yeah, it's mine. It's not theirs. It's not the boys. A couple extra hotel room keys just in case. And a spare featherweight light bulb because you never know when those are going to go out. And uh, my favorite pair of just thread snips for, for trimming threads. I love these little spring action guys. And that's all that's in here besides, oh, here's the other thing. Okay, rotary blades in a little package. And how many of you have one of these? This is an eyebrow trimmer. I get them at Walmart. They're like three in a package. But it's when you have to undo a long seam, this gets through those stitches and undoes that seam lickety split. And it's really great for paper piecing because the stitches on paper piecing are so small, you can't really fit the seam ripper underneath. And that's when I use this thing. So all of this stuff just fits in this little bag. Just like this, no problem here. Even my tape, and then it goes right into this bag, and I'm ready to fly. Now, this all told probably weighs about five pounds, so I pack less clothes so I can have more stuff, and that's just the way we roll. So, um, if it's still early where you are and you actually have a chance to sew. <laughs> Because I did it. Other than I did, I did sew this. That was good. Please sew something. And um, if you missed, um, what was I going to say? If you if you missed the beginning of Quilt Cam, it will be at the top of my Facebook page until the next Quilt Cam runs. So I'm going to pin this one there. It will also be uploaded to YouTube in the morning, and it will be embedded in tomorrow morning's blog post with all the background information on the things that we talked about. Um, until next time, I wish you lots of happy stitches and encourage you to follow along with what's going on with Quiltville Inn as things unfold. Um, what The thing that has brought me the most peace with this whole venture is knowing that I don't have to open until I'm ready. I don't have a deadline. So I don't need to let the deadline panic me. We're just going to work at it as we work at it as we work at it. And when it's ready, you'll know. So go sew something. I'm going to go pack something. We'll catch you next time on Quilt Cam Live. This is Bonnie Hunter signing off from the basement at Quiltville, Wahlberg, North Carolina. Have a good evening, everybody. Bye-bye.